Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. Hopefully everybody is doing great. Today's episode is crime in the United States. We're going to explore the latest news and statistics of crime in America. That's what's going to happen. We'll be diving deep into the topic of crime in the United States. Crime has always been a significant issue in this in the United States from petty theft to violent crimes, the country has basically seen it all, right? The United States has one of the highest crime rates in the world. And today we'll be taking a little bit of a closer look at why that is. First, let's, uh, let's look at some numbers, right? According to the FBI in 2020, there were over 10 million reported crimes in the United States. These crimes range from property crimes like burglary and theft to violent crimes like uh, we'll say homicide and aggravated assault. While this number maybe seems a little staggering, it's actually decreased from the previous years, which is a good thing, right? We want to decrease the crime in this country. We don't want it to be wild. However, it is important to note that the number of reported crimes doesn't necessarily reflect the actual number of the crimes committed. Some crimes typically will go unreported and some crimes may not be even solved or lead to anybody getting arrested or anything like that. So now let's talk about the different types of crimes that occur in this country, in the United States. Property crimes like burglary, theft, and motor vehicle theft are some of the most common crimes in this country. In 2020, there were over 6 million reported property crimes in the United States. That's wild. What are we doing? Violent crimes like homicide and rape and assault are all prevalent in the United States. In 2020, there were over 1.2 million reported violent crimes in this country. And that's what I'm trying to get to is like the violent crimes, man. You know what I mean? That's it's just too much. Way too much. One of the most significant contributors to the crime in the United States is poverty. Studies have shown that poverty is linked to higher rates of crime. Of course, I mean, you see Detroit and all that stuff, right? People who live in poverty stricken areas are more likely to turn to crime for a means of survival. And that's that is exactly what's happening. I mean, I uh, I think I had an episode before. A while back about uh, trying to buy a home in Detroit because Detroit is basically destroyed, right? The city of Detroit and the city of Detroit is trying to get these houses out so they can they're basically having uh, auctions and they go from a dollar to a hundred dollars. And these houses are destroyed, right? And what they're trying to do is trying to get people, investors and other people to buy those homes and you have a certain amount of time to get them back up and running and maybe put some walls on and I don't know what what else whatever else is missing from them but they're trying to revamp the city right because they just can't do it on their own however the crime is so big there because of poverty because that's what happened the factory started closing down and all this stuff and people turned into survival some people obviously weren't thinking of survival they're thinking of stealing and and doing violent crimes and stuff like that but i mean there's there's always that right there's always that and it's it's super unfortunate but that is the reason why some of these states some of these cities are like this is because poverty level so another contributing factor is the ability of guns the availability of guns sorry i didn't say that right the united states has some of the most relaxed gun laws in the world making it easier for individuals to obtain firearms. This, in turn, leads to higher rates of gun-related crimes. We all know that Joe likes guns. And even though I am not a Republican and I am not a Democrat and I'm none of that crazy stuff that you see out there about guns, I realize that guns are super important because it's a way to protect yourself and your family. Right. Doesn't mean that you have to have a grenade launcher and and blow people up. 
but it's important to now these days it is important to have something to defend yourself because then because everybody has guns now bad people have guns so what are you gonna do throw rocks at them so it's important however i do realize that this country is the easiest to get the guns because they don't really they do a, a small background check on you and they don't know if you are if you are messed up in the head they don't know if you're depressed they don't know anything you could just go in there and buy the gun and if that background check Oh, you you haven't been arrested for this. You don't have a misdemeanor on this. You don't haven't. They'll give you a gun, and it is relaxed. It is easy to get a gun to get a gun easier here in this country, despite the high crime in the United States. These are steps being taken to reduce crime. Community policing programs, increased education, which we need. We need more education. These schools are out of control, and job opportunities in low income areas are just a few that the local governments and communities are working to to combat crime. Not everything works out that easy, right? There's a lot of money involved in this kinds of stuff. There's a lot of good people out there trying to change things, but sometimes local government is really hard lo, really hard to to work with when it comes to these kinds of things. And um crime in the United States is it's rough, right? Because if you have children and uh, they're they're gonna grow up to something like this. So you always check on situations like this. Like, what are we doing about the crime? Like, how are we going to change it? Because you have small children and you have families, and nephews, and all this stuff that you don't want them to grow up in a messed up world. You want them to have an opportunity. You don't want them to be gunned down or to be beat up by police for no reason or things like that. The, the issues that are happening now, you don't want them to. You want them to teach them the importance of education and to go after uh, go after something that they're good at and they can, you know, sharpen their skills so they don't have to. So so it doesn't affect them as bad. I know that there's going to be lots of ups and downs as for myself. There's some times that there's been some times that I didn't have any money that I couldn't buy anything, couldn't even get milk or anything when I was living on my own. And it's tough, right? And that's when it's like, well, I'm just going to go do this to try to get some money. And that's the problem is it shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't have to go, well, I'm going to go do this so I can get some extra money because I don't have any food for my family. It shouldn't have to be that way in this country. We come here for an opportunity. We don't come here to commit crimes. I'm not speaking for everybody. There are some people that have different agendas. But for the people that are trying to make it, they want an opportunity to have a normal life, a good life, going to work, having a family, not getting your stuff taken away, not being shot down, not being robbed, not, you know, not any of that stuff. You just want a good life. We only live once and this is the only life that you have. You can't regenerate yourself into somebody else. You can't just... Uh, hold your brain for studies and they're going to make you a new body. I mean, you have one life and that's the only life you get. And we make mistakes as we move, as we grow older, as we, as, as we, not as we grow older, but we make mistakes as people, as, as we grow, right? As you know, your twenties, your teens and twenties, and you, some people mature faster than others and you make mistakes. We're going to make mistakes. We're human, but it takes for you to learn from those mistakes to, make an impact later on so you can be like hey you know what i've done a bunch of bullshit but i'm going to uh change things and offer different kinds of help instead of contributing to the problem right that's what it's about that's why you make mistakes so you can learn from them so you don't so you can understand what you're doing this is not right i'm going to change my shit and do things differently so i'm not a part of the problem so i can be maybe part of the solution because it's never too late it's just it's never too late right you can, when it comes to this kinds of stuff yes it's too late if you're 40 or 50 and you want to play football professionally and be a millionaire that's not going to happen but for these kinds of things you can there there is an option it just takes for you to do the right thing no matter what you've done no matter what mistakes you've done no matter if you lived in a tent and made all kinds of money all of a sudden you learn from that you're like hey this is what happened to me don't do this and it's it's uh it's what it takes for us to spread that kind of information so some people that are in your spot 
where you were before so they can understand there is something better on the other side. So, I mean, this is a this is a tough podcast. This is a tough episode because of all the stuff that's happening now and all the poverty and all, all the people, especially during COVID and after COVID and all that stuff, that it's really tough to to have episodes like this because you realize that there is a lot of people that don't have anything, that don't have anything, and sometimes they don't get the opportunity to to do anything with what they have, and it's uh, it's it's very sad, right? It's very sad to see those kinds of things happening. And you watch the videos, and you watch the people as you drive by, and uh, some people have lost everything, and it's it's sad, right? And a lot of it, not a lot of it, but some of it, it has to do with crime and drugs, and that people have lost everything for that because hey, they it's easy. I'm just gonna go sell all these drugs and become rich, and it doesn't happen that way. You get busted, you lose everything, you end up in jail, and then you're stuck. And you're stuck. Your family's stuck. They're poor. They don't have anything to eat. You're in and out of jail. And I mean, all this stuff, right? So every decision that you take affects you. Um, and it's part of us learning on how to uh, on how to express ourselves and how to change the way we look at things as we grow older. So I don't know. Hopefully you guys like this episode and hopefully this gets you thinking about uh, some of the things that I said, right? Hopefully we can spread the word and we can... Uh, we can be good with each other and we can start changing things and spreading more of a positive view of life than everything negative that's happened or that you've done in in your life. Until next time, peace.